Jared Poland. Fronos Photo. Dot com here with a 30 for 30 Lightroom head-to-head -head edition where I have Steven. Steven, how's it going? It's going good. All right. It's brought to you by the fine people over at Adobe. And if you want to follow all the 30 for 30 videos, head over to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. And if you haven't downloaded a free trial of Lightroom, well, go ahead and do that. So now, Steven, I think it's time to get editing. Let's do it. Here we go. And we have... Somebody's dining room. Ah, so it's, yes, it's one of those southern dining rooms with those nice chairs. I can smell the potpourri from here. All right, house. You know what? I think this is one of those HDR ones because Lightroom lets you merge HDR. We are going to go through this process because, look, you've got... Anybody who doesn't know what it is, it's a bracketed shot. And Lightroom will then go ahead and merge them into an HDR shot so that we can bring out... Oh, okay, here, let me, let me take that back a minute. This is something that you do when you shoot interiors for um, trying to sell houses uh, for the realtor. This is a great function for realtors to use or for people that are shooting houses. Or if you do HDR out in the world, you could totally use this function. But this is a cool one because check it out. We want the outside to match the inside so that when you look through the windows, it's not just blown out. Because if I was to just edit this image, I'd have to be like, all right. Let's try to bring it back. I'm like, oh, but now I'm doing all this stuff and it's not really where I want it to be. So I'm gonna reset that. I'm gonna select all of these together, holding down the shift key, clicking on that, right click, and we have, where is my merging? There it is, okay. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key, select one of them, hold the shift key down, boom, selecting all three, gonna right click, gonna go to photo merge HDR, then a screen is gonna pop up. It's gonna populate it. Let's go ahead and hit merge, and then it's gonna create another file for us to play with, which, which will have more dynamic range. So here's the final one. What, oh, it looks pretty good right off the rip. What you will see, you see this? We now have 10 stops instead of just the, what would one of them be? One of them would give us five stops. All right, so now we can work with this. I don't want it to be like that. Boom, let's go. Here we go, here we go. I'm gonna spice this up as if we were trying to sell this 1970s style house. Boom. See that, bringing the highlights back. Gonna go ahead and crunch the clarity. I don't know that I like this right there in the wall, and I don't like that plate either on the wall. Again, let me remind you, when you are doing Photography like this, you don't want to take out things that should still be there. That becomes lying and cheating. There we go. I got rid of the plate on the right and the plate on the left. That's what I did with that one. What else do we have here? Let's see. Lens correction. Yep, I'm going to use lens correction this time because I, wanted, I want to brighten this up here. We can also go down to post crop vignette. Type in 10. I think that's perfect. I think that would sell this house every single time. And by sell it every time, I mean it won't. So I'm going to get rid of that, go back to zero, go back up to my main edits, play with the white balance. Boom. There we go. Got my highlights. You can see what's happening. And I think we are pretty good or close to there. I would wish we had more light down here. But as we do that, we're losing the outside that we wanted to bring in. So you just want to be careful with what you're working with. We can go back through the originals. You can see the difference. And boom, that is a much better image than where it started. Oh, I'm going to warm it up. I want it to be warm. Remember, you guys can download these three files, you can play with them, try out the HDR, try it for yourself when you go home, take a bunch of uh, bracketed shots and then bring it into Lightroom and try it out. But now I'm curious to see what Steven is doing with this image. All right, let's check this out. Three pictures, so yeah, this is actually, I think an HDR photo. Looks like we got three bracketed images, one exposed for the highlights one exposed for the midtones and one exposed for the shadows. 
so Lightroom has a new feature, well, newer feature, that you can merge these into one single HDR image. So we're going to do that today. Let's see. We're going to select all, right click, photo merge HDR. It's going to create the HDR preview. Let's see how this comes out. That actually comes out really nice, and that's the auto tone version. Uh, we also have the auto align feature, which is more like if you don't have a tripod and you're doing this handheld, then you'll want to check that. But I'll just keep it checked just in case. Uh, there's no ghosting in this image. There's no like leaves moving in the background or anything like that while the three images were being taken. So I want to leave that off. So we're going to merge that, let Lightroom do its thing. Looks like this could be a nice like uh, shot for a realtor trying to sell a house or something. Looks like it created our DNG raw file, which is awesome that it does that in Lightroom, no external editor. Let's see, we've got, this is the auto edited image. And it, again, it looks really nice starting off the bat. Uh, I do think those windows are still a tad blown out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take down this exposure just a hair. Let's see, we're gonna go something like right here. I'm not gonna touch the contrast just yet. Highlights, I think I do wanna keep them all the way down just to really showcase outside the window. Uh, shadows, I'm gonna keep pretty, up pretty far. Uh, let's see. Whites, I'm gonna hit my Alt Option key and just make sure we have some pure white in the image. Also with blacks, I'm gonna do the same. It looks like in this corner, we've got some deep, rich blacks. So we're going to, I think I'm just gonna bring down just a hair more. Now clarity, now adjusting the mid-tones, I don't think I wanna do much with this. Uh, if anything, I think I wanna bring it down. I wanna make it more uh, inviting, I guess is the word. Uh, if I bring it up a little bit, I think it's a little too harsh. Plus it really bring, starts to bring out that contrast. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it down to about negative mm, 15, I think, give or take. Vibrance, I do wanna pump it up just a hair. Uh, let's say 20, and I'm gonna take saturation up just a, a smudge too. Tone curve. Uh, I usually make a very subtle custom S-curve. Again, very, very subtle. Um, so I'm going to make that right now. Just bring up my lights just a tab. My darks I usually bring up a little bit too. And my shadows I usually bring down a little bit. So this adds, adds a little more natural contrast to the image. The point curve itself is going to be linear. So to toggle that off and on, I'm just going to do this. I think I like it. I think I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. We're going to go down to uh, color. Let's see what we got here in the HSL module. I think it all looks pretty good. It looks a little red. I'm going to do some extreme. I'm going to change this slider all the way, both ways, just to see what I'm really touching here. Let's see. We have, we do about negative 13 on that. Now the orange looks a little fake, almost like Snooky Jersey Shore-like. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring that down just a hair and make it more realistic, realistic more like a, a wood finish. Um, maybe bring up the luminance a little bit on that too. Yellow, let's see, we've got a lot of yellow in the image. I'm gonna bring that down to about 57. Green, I'm gonna, it looks like this was maybe taken during uh, St. Patrick's Day or something with all the green on the table. And let's see what we have here as far as aqua goes and blue. I think I'm just gonna bring that down a hair as well. And purple, let's see what that affects. The carpet seems to be a little purpley. And magenta, um, I think I'll actually pump that up a hair. Uh, detail, I have a general sharpening preset that I use, but since I don't have my specific laptop with me, I'm gonna make it myself right here. Usually bring in about 50 for the amount, radius I keep at one. Detail, I usually bring up for a landscape type image, or I bring down for a portrait. So I'm gonna keep it kind of right in between at 30. Masking, I'm gonna hold my Alt Option key to see what areas I'm affecting. And I'm gonna mask it off right about here. Noise reduction, I don't like to do, even though HDR, you usually wanna do noise reduction because you're stacking images. And the more you stack, the more ISO and grain and natural noise is gonna get introduced into the image. Um, this is the ISO 250, three stacked images. I'm gonna leave noise reduction off but I am gonna take up the color noise just a hair at say 28 and move my detail and smoothness slider a little bit. Again, this is my general sharpening preset. Lens correction, this is always iffy. Um, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm gonna enable lens correction. I think I do like it. Um, the other thing, I feel like this is off just a hair. So I wanna do auto level. I'm gonna hit this key 
and it looks like Lightroom just automatically levels that image out for me. And auto upright, I want to see, it kind of takes the image and, oh, I don't know what I like better. This one's tough. Um, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to keep it auto, auto upright. I do like that. Uh, let's see, highlight priority as far as post crop vignetting. I'm going to keep that off. D Hayes, let's just see what that does. Looks like just add some natural contrast to the image. I'm gonna just double check what we're doing there. That looks pretty good. And as far as color, let me double check that too. I think that looks good. I'm gonna bring up my vibrance just a hair before I finish this edit. And maybe add some natural contrast to that as well. I think the white balance looks pretty good for the most part. I'm gonna hit the L key twice to look at my light box. And I think I like that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stay there. Looks good. All right, so I have Steven's edit, he has mine, vice versa, so on and so forth. On three? Let's do it. One, two, three, boom. Mine's on the left, mm. boomified. Contrasty as usual. <laughs> Yours is on the right, more ghostly. Subtle, yes. It is subtle, but it's not bad at all. Well, and I also used the, uh, the lens correction. It really straightened it up. And the auto upright, yeah, which automatically straightens it out. It looks. Wow, that looks a lot different. Um, I just kept mine more subtle too. I, I almost made it more dreamy. Yeah, but it but it actually looks. It doesn't look like a bad HDR. Where, yeah, I hope it doesn't look too fake. I don't know. What well, is your living room, or it dining is. room, or yeah, whatever you call that? It is. It's where family dinners occur. It's well, yeah, we did in the '70s. That's when we. Uh, <laughs> we I love I love the fuchsia paint. <laughs> um, no, I I look at yours and and it's very subtle. I mean. It's not my style. I, I am a. It is a very different style, yeah. I'm a boomifier, but I'm, like I say, is yours is very subtle. And when it comes to doing real estate type things, I mean, the point behind this one was to do a um, an HDR image. Mm -hmm. And some of the HDR images that people will find will be landscapes, and this is a perfect example of it. So this is a great opportunity to play with it. Yeah, and I basically brought up the point when I was editing that I wanted to make it more inviting, so I brought down the clarity a little bit. But I almost know. I don't know if I want that. I almost. I don't know if I wanted to. At this point, maybe bring it back, but the clarity. Yeah. Why you think it, you want to add? It might more be a little too away? soft at this point. I'm kind of debating now after seeing yours. Well, but that's that's the that's the fun of this. Yeah. I mean, that is how this stuff works. You get to play with these raw files. We're gonna give you all three of these DNGs so that you can go ahead and merge them in the HDR in Lightroom. So go over to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030 and you can download these DNGs as well as all of the other DNGs that are part of this Lightroom edition 30 for 30. But if you don't have Lightroom yet, well go ahead and download that free trial. It's right there on the website and that is where we'll leave it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.